Namaste, my friends. I am Dwayne Grove, the Curious Sage, bringing you the amazing and transformative power and value of human connection. In my message today, I want to address the wounds and shadows in our lives. The wounds and shadows are with us oftentimes in times of crisis and times of great stress. And these wounds have a tendency to bubble up the places that we've been deeply hurt in the past or the shadows where we face such tremendous fear or misgiving. Yet, this is a time as we're all continuing to be more or less confined to our homes to be more reflective of the wounds and shadows in our lives and bring healing to those places. In the midst of all of this pandemic, there might have been great fear, especially in the beginning, of wondering whether you would be the next victim. And would you recover if you were able to, or it, would you succumb to this virus? The wounds can be places where somebody has maybe rejected us in the past, or it might have been a loss of some sort. And some of these wounds may be coming forward again right now. There are many that, who unfortunately, because of the way things are right now, may have lost their job, or may be laid off at this point, or furloughed, and those wounds cut very deeply. You see, wounds and shadows are meant to be healed. It is said of the wounds in our life that if we fail to heal those wounds, we will continue to bleed on others. And so when you think about how we respond to wounds and shadows in our life, you think through the fact that as humans we often project our own inner struggles on other people because we don't want to own them and heal them ourselves. So we blame other people. We blame other people for feeling wounded. We blame other people for the fear that we face in our lives. Yet what you also find is that the shadows in your life, the areas where you fear the most, are always with you lurking around the corner until you look into those shadows and decide that you no longer fear them. With Chiron and Black Lilith, we find the opportunity and the call right now based upon their placement in the cosmos to examine these areas of our life. So instead of projecting upon others, maybe turn within and find the time to heal those wounds and to address those fears. How many times have we, as humans, looked upon somebody else who perhaps may be obese or perhaps living on the street and simply go, God, I, you know, why is this person in this place, you know? And we look almost upon those people with disdain. But there is an old saying that says, but there by the grace of God go I. And it is a reminder to look within, to find compassion and empathy in that moment. For we don't live in the, those persons' lives. We live in our own. But what we are doing is we're projecting our own fears or misgivings, our own wounds, if you will, on other people as opposed to taking the time and examining our own role in time and space. There's an old childhood uh, phrase that goes, I'm rubber, you're glue, whatever you say to me bounces off of me and sticks to you. And I'm sure as children we may have all heard that or maybe even spoke that ourselves. And it is a reminder that whatever we project forward upon others, whether it's criticism or it is disdain or it is, uh, you know, hate, 
is really just going to be a reflection upon what's inside of ourselves. And so when we find ourselves in that place where we are projecting our wounds or our fears and shadows upon other people, perhaps it's time that we stop, reflect, and be willing to recognize that those same very wounds and fears are within ourselves. And it's not a criticism on somebody else that we're making, but a criticism of ourselves. So in this time, it's an opportunity to show great self-compassion and be willing and able to step forward and heal the wounds and face the fears in our own lives and resolve to move beyond them.